In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to calculate the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons when an atom has a charge. So let's get started. What are charged uh, atoms? A charged atoms are called ions. Ions. Let's say uh, an ion is an atom with an extra or a missing electron. In other words, an ion is a charged atom. Let's talk about how atoms can lose or gain electrons. It has a lot to do with something called electronegativity. And when we uh, move into more chemistry uh, further into the year, we'll talk about some of these trends. Uh, so this is kind of like our introduction to electronegativity. Some atoms or some elements are more electronegative than others. That means some elements are very good at gaining electrons and some are very poor at gaining electrons. Francium in the lower left-hand corner that I circled first is very poor at gaining electrons. And fluorine, so francium, and anything on the left side of the periodic table is very bad at gaining extra negative electrons. And the right side, fluorine especially, is very good at gaining extra negative electrons. So the stuff on the right-hand side of the periodic table tends to be more negative because there are more negative electrons. And the stuff on the left side of the periodic table, the elements on the left side of the periodic table, tend to be more positive uh, because they're very poor at gaining electrons. Let's define electronegativity just for fun. Electronegativity is the tendency for atoms to gain or lose electrons. Some are good at gaining electrons, some are good at losing electrons. How about we do fluorine as our first example? So normally fluorine has, well let's see, nine protons. And when I do the math for the number of neutrons, let's see, 19 minus 9, there are 10 neutrons. Now, if fluorine isn't charged, like in the, this example that I'm doing right now, there are 9 electrons. That's good. The protons and electrons are equal to each other. But we're dealing with ions, and ions have either negatives or positives attached to them. Let's draw this out. So if fluorine has 9 positive protons and 10 neutral neutrons in the nucleus, um, normally there's 9 electrons hanging out. Fluorine is going to feel a lot more stable if it has or has gained an extra electron. So fluorine is going to gain an extra electron. And when it does that, it no longer has nine electrons. Let's draw this out. Regular nine protons. Those numbers never change. Ten neutrons. Now there are ten electrons. Fluorine's often got an extra electron. Let's do another problem. So um, the stuff on the left side of the periodic table, like francium or lithium, um, tend to be missing electrons or unable to gain electrons. Let's talk about lithium now. So lithium is going to have a positive charge to it. Now let's do what uh, normally lithium has. Lithium normally has three positive protons. And when we take the mass number minus the number of protons, seven minus three is four neutrons. Now normally if lithium's not an ion, there are three electrons. But we're dealing with an ion at this time, it's got a positive charge. Let's draw it out. Three positive protons, four neutral neutrons, and surrounding it are three regular old electrons. Now, lithium is very poor at holding on to its electrons, even gaining them. So what it's going to do oftentimes is get rid of those electrons. So let me just erase this real quick. Take a look. I've got two negative electrons, and I've got three positive protons in the nucleus. Therefore, lithium is going to have an overall positive charge because there's an extra proton there in the nucleus that is unshielded by the electrons. So let's write it out. Li plus, there's three protons, four neutrons. And since lithium is missing an electron, there's going to be two electrons. 
Let's do another problem. How about we try O2 minus? Okay, so O2 minus. There's eight protons. I know that from the periodic table. And when I take the mass number 16 minus 8, I have eight neutrons. Now, normally, uh, oxygen would have eight electrons. But take a look. We're dealing with an ion. And it looks like oxygen, 2 minus, has two extra electrons. So instead of eight electrons, there's going to be 10. What do you think? Easy? Not easy? Let's do another one. This one's going to be a positive ion. How about we try aluminum? And oftentimes, aluminum, if it ionizes, has a 3 plus charge to it. Think of it this way. Aluminum is missing three electrons. All right, so how many protons? There's 13 is the atomic number, so there's 13 protons. The atomic mass is 26.98, but we round it to 27. 27 minus 13 is 14 neutrons. Now, normally, aluminum has 13 negative electrons, but we're dealing with an ion. Think of it this way. Aluminum is missing three electrons. 13 minus 3 is 10. 10 electrons. It's more stable that way, and that's why aluminum will ionize. All right, so I've got one last piece of instruction for you. What I'd like to do, you guys to do, is based on the notes that you took today, write a procedure on how to determine the number of electrons in a charged ion. I want you to write this procedure in the bottom of your notes, please. If you have any questions, let me know.